this video I'd like to talk to you about the different item types available to create your lists. To navigate to where I'm currently at you're going to go into the list section and then edit lists. I'm going to go ahead and just select on one of my existing lists. So here I'm just going to add in a new item and these are all the options you have to choose from. Now you've got a check mark item yes, no, and signature as our default options. These transfer over from paper very easily. When I move over to the app to show you what these look like, you have your check mark here where you check the item off. You'll answer yes or no to a question. And then when we scroll down a little bit further, we'll go ahead and pass those advanced features and just come straight to the signature where essentially you will sign with your finger. The employee dropdown and the multiple choice dropdown these items allow you to select an employee's name. When you're looking in the reporting, it's really nice because you can actually go back and reference or filter by a specific individual. So you can look at what lists reference that employee. And then for your multiple choice, you actually create the answer options to choose from, and then you're able to select one of those options. Your open-ended, your free response, and your short entry, these are just fields where you can enter in any of the information. So asking just an open-ended question where they can answer. The main differences here for your open-ended questions is your free response has a very large amount of characters that are allowed. Uh, it's basically limitless where your short entry, um, it is just that, it's a short entry, you are more limited on the characters that you can enter in on that. So if it's a very short response versus a lengthy, you're going to want to use one versus the other. For the multimedia items, you have photos, QR codes, and barcodes. Photo is where they're going to take a picture with the app. And then the QR code and barcode will use the camera to scan a specific code. These are unique. There are additional videos on the QR code barcode function that you can watch to learn more about it. And when we look at the app for the multimedia, here you can see they're taking a picture. The prompt here says take photo. So you can see they're taking a picture using the app. And then in the QR code, she's walking to the dumpster corral, make sure that lid is closed and then scanning that QR code. So all three of these will access the camera from your device. Uh, one is to take a picture and then the other two are just to scan and verify that that specific code has been scanned. For the numeric items, you have your measurement, your ratings, one through five, a custom rating, and then a formula. Your measurement item is used to enter in any numeric value. So this is used quite heavily for temperatures or entering in quantities. And then your ratings, one through five and 10, are used uh, very similarly. This could be for an employee evaluation, for example, or an audit, or you're rating the cleanliness. And you can give it a one to five or a one to 10 scale. And then your custom rating here allows you to select any number between one and 10 to start and end with. When you're looking at it from the app, you've got your measurement item here, your ratings one through five, one through 10, and then that custom rating. With the measurement item, you can also use our remote temperature sensors to record a temperature from one of your units, as well as a Bluetooth thermometer or Bluetooth probe to record the temperatures of uh, like hot hold items or cold held items. And then you can manually enter in a numeric value as well. So depending on what you're gathering or what information, you may use one or the other or multiple. And then your custom rating, you actually select your start and end when you're building that item out. Now the formula item is neat. It'll actually calculate small equations from your numeric items. So if I was to enter in a value of three, it doesn't change, but when I add in additional items, and now you can see it's showing that formula. And it shows that this is a system value with the date and time stamp. So once you've entered in your information, then it will update that information here. For the date and time items, this is essentially recording the date and time, not when the task is completed, but referencing a date and time specifically. So when you're looking at it from the app here, you've got date, time, date, and time. You can see that also references here. When you select the date, you can select any date. So if this is referencing the future or the past, you can select that specific date. And as you can see, it still includes my name with the date and time stamp that it was completed. So this can be in reference to maybe there was a customer incident and you need to document the date as well as the time that the incident occurred. Then you can enter that in on this list. 
date and time here so you can see your dates and your times to select from. The stopwatch item and in the stopwatch item this is really neat uh, it's actually a timer so you just start the timer and it's going to continue to tick and, and count that time. This is used uh, for audits for example you want to look at the speed of service maybe through a drive through um, or just customers coming in until they're served. It could be used as part of training to see how long it takes to complete a task by someone who's experienced and then you can have the employee timed so you can see if they, you know how quickly they're they're adapting to the new process. So once you've finished you just click stop and then it includes your name with the date and time stamp of when you stopped the timer, marking it as completed. Your read-only items, text and subtitle, are just that. They're just for reading the information. So here you have read-only with your subtitle and text. Subtitles are going to be bold and centered, and your text items are going to be to the left. They're going to be the normal text that you see with your normal items. So depending on how you want to use it, subtitle could be breaking it into different sections and the text can be giving different information or just if you like one format over the other. Both options are available. The last item I want to review here is the sublist item. This is where you can create a list within a list. So essentially breaking up an opening checklist, for example, into the different parts. So it could be your equipment, making sure it's set up properly, um, making sure your customer receiving area is set up appropriately. If you have a drinking station or you serve food, then you can make sure that those areas are appropriate. And just breaking it up into a sub list, where here you can see this is essentially where you'd give it a name. Come over here to those particular items, you can see there's 17 tasks. And this is where they can come in and now see what what items need to be completed as part of that sub list or that section. And there's all your different item types. You can use as many in a list as you'd like. There's no limit to how you arrange them. Formulas are the only one that does require to use one of the numeric values and there is a video specific to the formula item type.